we have here. Let's open it up and find out. So this is a new project that I will be working on this week and next week probably. thought I had heard rattling, but it doesn't appear that way. It's in decent condition. Not a lot of dust. It wasn't used too much. Jewel's in decent shape. And front plate's in decent shape. So we have been opened. But I am going to open this up and just assess the system real quick. Uh, let me get my towel real quick so I can put this down. Fun times. Oh, I thought I had a drink over here. Guess not. I am parched. Oh, let's see. Bit. Where's my big bit? There it is. So let's get this open and see what we're working with here. been sunny today. I got the rest of the white system sanded back down, so I'm going to try to go out and do a clear coat today. It is very possible, but by the time that I release this video, that you may have found out that it has not been given away, even though the, it was announced that it was given away. I am waiting to hear back all right, let's open this up. Let's see what we're working with here. Oh, it looks good. Clock cap's already been removed. Fan's decent, but we're going to replace that, redo the uh, thermal paste underneath. Uh, CPU fan moves, so it's not making a good connection anymore. We're going to take that off, clean that, remove the paste on that, and reapply new. <clears throat> Power supply looks very clean. No visible issues with the power supply. No bulging caps on the board. 
Looks like a nice candidate to get modded in. I think we can do something really fun with this one. Pull this board out real quick. We're going to start by cleaning off the board. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I haven't had enough to drink today. The clock capacitor was right here. It's been removed. But you can see there's still a little bit of acid around it. So I'm going to clean that off. Make sure that there's no acid on the bottom. Um, do a little scrubbing and cleaning on the whole board so that it uh, will last a little bit longer. And get that acid flushed off the board so it doesn't do any more damage. Because even though the system's functioning, it's sitting on the board is causing damage or has caused damage. I don't know yet. Should be all right. This is one I believe that uh, was being used, so it should be just fine. But we will clean it just to make sure that it doesn't have issues down the road. <coughs> Out of there! Goodness. Front panel, controllers. And one, two more screws. I don't know why I always unplug that. Oh, because I'm pulling it off in a minute. That's why I unplugged it. So this video, uh, excuse me, this video <laughs> is going to be a long one, obviously. I'm not splitting all this up into separate segments. <clears throat> so I'm going to move some of this stuff out of the way so that I can move the towel. from several different Xboxes up here. <clears throat> I think I've pulled three apart in the last two days. Grab all these screws real quick. Pen. Bits. All right, you still hear me? You still hear me? Good, good, good. And I'll just get rid of the rest of these screws real quick. And then I will have plenty of room to work on this. So I need my rubbing alcohol and my toothbrush. And possibly some Q-tips. <clears throat> so we're going to zoom in real quick. Focus on the board. Square the shot. And then zoom back out. So I'm going to keep it right about there. And I'm just going to do a quick... Easy brushing of the board to loosen up all this dust that's on the board. Most likely I won't even have to wash most of the board down because of the fact that the dust just will come right off and it will leave it pretty shiny. Uh, but in the area, this area over here, um, I've never seen a acid leak outside of this area. It's this post right here when this is when the board's screwed in and it causes the board to kind of tilt a little bit and so the the leaks always spread out this way and come down that way so i've never seen them outside of this area right here 
and I've probably seen 200 motherboards with leaking capacitors, maybe even more than that. So I'll get the rest of this cleaned up real quick, and then I will clean the rest of it up with a little bit of Remy alcohol, and then I'll flip it over and do the same on the other side. And I'm really not pushing hard on this. I mean, I, I could hold it with two fingers, and that's as much pressure as I'm using. You don't want to do it hard because there's parts on here that, you know, if you bump them too hard, you might break one of the legs off or pop one of the chips off the board or these these really small ones. I've seen these pop right off. Um, usually you won't ever damage, you know, the main chips on the board, but, you know, the capacitors and everything else, is, you have to be careful around. But it only takes a few minutes to brush down the board, get most of the dust off of it. And this will help prolong the life of the board as dust that settles on the components will end up overheating the components, which will shorten the life of your system. So now we're going to put a little bit of rubbing alcohol <clears throat> on the area of the board. This is 91. Uh, I recommend 91 or 95 because it uh, has a lot less water to dry off afterwards. And we're just going to scrub all the components in that little arc area that I told you about. We're going to try to get the board as clean as possible. A lot of the times, this whole bank of chips right here will end up totally corroded from the acid, but fortunately, that has not happened here. But we will get this all cleaned up, get that excess acid off the board, and then we'll do a quick rinse. Back of the board, looking at traces, I don't see any damage. There's a little corrosion spot right there, but it's super tiny. It should be good. I'll just clean up this area right here from a spillover possible. And then we will rinse that off also. Pat this side down. And then pat the other side down in the areas where I can. Just get the excess moisture off. Be careful not to bend anything. Just kind of stick your fingers down in the area and touch the board and that's enough to dry up most of the, the liquid. to let this dry in front of a fan for a little while. In my case, I'm just going to use a heat gun. Just going to hold it a little bit further away, let the hot air blow on it. And keep it on low because you still have a combustion point of that rubbing alcohol. I don't want to set it on fire. And the low setting on this will get about 400 degrees, I think it is. So I'm using it just basically just to blow warm air onto it. I'm not trying to heat anything up. Um, it should only take a, a minute or two of warming up the board. And see, I'm keeping it far enough away that this is warm. 
probably about 100, 105 degrees. But I'm not getting close enough so that I really have to worry about it doing any kind of damage to the system. Just want to get this all dried up real quick. Looks like it's clean underneath the chip. I mean, uh, underneath the capacitors. Usually that's where you have to worry the most is the liquid that gets underneath here. And then the back is dry. So we're good to go. And I'm just going to get it a little bit warmer. Board's probably about 90, 95 right now. And then I'll let it dry off, uh, cool down on its own and let it continue the evaporation process. And I'm going to start taking off the clips for the heat sinks. Mm, cool aid. So, grab my clips real quick. <clears throat> it's the easiest way to get down into these. Open your clips up, push down, bend out, lift up. You're free quickest way without having to do any kind of damage to the board or the fan or the retaining clip so very simple I'm going to pull off these screws real quick so I can unmount the fan still a decent fan but it runs much better and cooler with the later stock heat sinks that don't have a fan and we are going to repurpose the header for the power for the fan and we will do the same thing with our CPU and I'm going to stick just behind the plastic tilt it out away from me and lift up if I can get back in there Get in there! All right. So, oh, it came right off perfect. It really won't even have to do much. Yeah, this one, you can tell it's been like this a while because all the putty has actually come off the die. So this has probably been running fairly hot i want to guess probably 60 to 65 celsius or higher so by doing this we will be able to lower the temperature you do not want to use anything metallic on this i know you might be annoyed by the glue that's on the side of the chip but the die is uh, very fragile the die is the very center it's basically a glass and if you chip the die, you destroy the CPU. So you want to use plastic scrapers. And you want to do it lightly if it will actually scrape off. A lot of the time it will because it's so old. If not, you're going to have to use some kind of a solvent to get it off. I usually use rubbing alcohol. It usually does fine enough. Um, I try to stay away from things like uh, Goo Gone, Goof Off, any of those petroleum-based solvents um, for my own health and <laughs> for the electronics health. So we are basically clear there. I'm going to clean that up with a little bit of rubbing alcohol and some Q-tips. Focus. So I'm going to use some 91. And I'm just going to clean up 
the area around the die and the chip. And there's really nothing on this chip area that can be broken other than the die itself. So be careful, but you don't have to worry too much. Um, Q-tip, you're not going to put too much pressure on it, and it's not likely to chip the die. And I can't get it all off, but that's pretty, pretty close. I just got more off with my finger doing that. So, yeah, I did get it all off now. All right. So that's done. We're now going to warm that area up so that the excess alcohol burns off. And at the same time, I'm going to be warming up the GPU because I have to pull that off next. So, five, six inches away, circles. That way it doesn't do direct heat on one area too long. And you can touch the heat sink every once in a while until it gets to the point where you can't touch it with your bare hands anymore. That's going to be probably about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Still underneath the specs of the chip, so it's not going to do any damage to the chip. And you should be able to pull it off at that point. Do not ever, 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 ever pull straight up. You always want to twist it side to side until you feel that it's loose enough, and then you tilt it off. We're probably about 85, 90 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Hundred, hundred and five, maybe hundred and ten. All right, that should be good enough to twist it. All right, twisting back and forth. You can see that here. So now you want to lift, oh, god damn, that's hot. Lift up that way so that it comes up like that. And I'm going to try to get this cleaned off before it warms up. I mean, before it cools down. one of these. These are easily replaced. Just, it's still almost at a point it's liquid, but it's starting to cool really fast. So it's getting really sticky. But I can get most of it up like this. And then come back and clean it up after it's cooled down a little bit with some isopropyl. Just a little more. All right. And this is going to leave it nice and clean. On this one, I'm not as worried about the outside because it's harder to get down into those areas. But I will clean up a little bit of it. more worried about the center metal core of this because that's where most of the heat's going to come out and need to be transferred from. And 
as long as we got that area, it will be good to go. Just want to make sure everything else is flat. You don't want any high spots because to keep the heat sink from sitting down on the chip properly. But as long as there's no high spots, we don't need to uh, we don't need to worry about it too much. Scrape this out. So now we need to clean off the um, the actual heat sinks so that I could reapply the paste and put them back on. Oh, I already have the other one prepped so all I have to do is put on the heat sink compound and that one is good and do this clean it up a little bit sorry not sure if you guys could see that I had I think I had it off camera. Alright, so that's cleaned off. Do a quick alcohol bath. Oh, yeah, you can see it now. And that's smooth now. Sorry, I'm doing a little bit more cleaning of it off camera. Trying to get it. Super clean. Yeah, it's pretty clean. I won't complain. So, we need our heat sink compound, which now I've misplaced or lost? Of course. That would be my luck. Oh, here it is. So. For these, everybody has their own way of doing things. I know how I've done things for almost 30 years as a computer technician, and I know what has worked for me, and I know what has worked for computers. I need more Arctic Silver. So basically, oh, hitting the camera again, my poor head. straight again for these um, the one the CPU you want it to just barely cover the die so you put it up on enough just to cover the die and then you could smear it around I usually use my finger um, some people use like business cards or whatever but you want a smooth surface for the heat sink to lay on And it doesn't have to be too thick, but it has to be thick enough to make contact between the two so that it can transfer the heat. And I got a good connection there because I could already go like that and it won't fall off. So it is nice and on there good. The paste is on there properly. I probably won't hold this one because this is much bigger 
and a smaller area where it's pasted, but it's still held. We've got a good seal on those. Let's go ahead and put the CPU clamp back on. <laughs> 20 year old plastic. Uh, let's see what happened. I had a feeling that might happen, so I had an extra one prepped. So hopefully this one is not as brittle. And that holds good. No wiggle, good deal. And for this one, on real quick. And remember, you have to be careful with these. Any scratch on that board can kill your whole system. So, like I said, I use the snips. I stick them down into the two holes. I pull it out. And then I bend down. And I actually missed a spot on the board back here. So now our board is clean. We have replaced the thermal paste. Um, we are good to go on this. Like I said, the caps look good. Clock capacitor was already out before I started working on it. So at this point, case has got to be fully taken apart. I've got a, another uh, somewhere, another 1.0, somewhere around here. Actually, I think it was a 1.1 that didn't have a board in it because of trace rot. Here it is. Ugh. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to temporary temporarily transplant the guts into this one so I can start working on it while I have everything disassembled for painting. I think this I think this uh, power supply works. I have to check, but I have to pull the other one out anyway, so if, if it's if it's not working, it's not a big deal. see what this is running like now. I don't know what the temperatures were before, but with the replacement of the heat sink uh, thermal paste, it should run a lot better because, like I said, this one was loose. It wasn't even being held down properly. So, hopefully, we'll see some nice numbers coming out of this. So I'm not going to screw this in completely since it's just a temporary home. I'm just going to put four, four uh, screws in to hold it in place. One in each corner. They're still shooting fireworks outside. It's uh the sixth, and it's like I don't know about seven o'clock, six thirty, seven o'clock at night, or not the sixth, the fifth. Lost a day there somewhere, and uh, they're sh still shooting them off like it's the fourth of July. Been going off for three days straight around here. cat doesn't know what to do. Every time he hears fireworks, he runs and hides under the desk. 
Poor kitty. All right, so we have this in. Like I said, this is just a temporary home just to get this set up and running. can at least start the rest of the process of modding and getting drives prepped and all that other good shizzle. All right. So we have Piece of candy. Um, there it is. I'm looking for my voltmeter. Uh, knocking everything over in the process. So we are going to plug this bad boy in. And I am going to test the voltage on that fan. I'm pretty sure it's three something. But I'm hoping it's five. So should be the inside too. Let's see what the fan looks like. Uh, it is inside too. So ground on the back side. Ground on the back side. And oh that'll work. Eleven volts. Okay. Um so it's a twelve volt straight out. I always thought it was five or three something, but it's twelve volts coming off of that. Interesting. I did not know that. So that'll work perfect if I decide to install a LED strip in this because it steps down into the little box that it has because the you can plug them in with um, you know just a straight phone charger uh, adapter like one of these, and they will step down in the little controller box down to whatever voltage it needs and these some of these go up to two and a half uh, amps and like you it's the amperage that's going to do more damage than anything than than the voltage so 12 volts it should step it down just fine and i should be able to use leds in this with no problem let's go ahead and get everything plugged in so we can start on the other stuff Set it somewhere. What did I do with it? Really? How do I lose? Oh, <laughs> it's like, how do I lose a damn DVD drive? Plug this back in, and I will turn it on and make sure it runs, and then I'm going to take a little break, and then I will come back and I will start working on modding the system. I just don't need to be in here perfect. This is like one of the earlier one ofs. At least the hard drive, the, the revision is. I don't think I've seen a 3944. Most of them I see are the 4034s for the, the early ones. Oh my goodness, get in there. up Xbox logo and we 
here, booting to a dash with no clock. Okay, good deal. So we are good to go as far as getting ready to mod. Let me do one quick test. I haven't tested the DVD drive yet. Let's see if there's any issues on it loading up. Belt seems fine. It seems to open and close without any issues at all. So we'll see if this loads up the game right away. Might just be a, a laser cleaning and just have to wait till that belt dies before it's replaced. I don't, I don't see any problems with it. First try, every try it's opening right up, closing. So I don't think there is an issue there. And are you going to load or do I have to restart you? I think it's because it's sitting on the clock. It's not going to the game. But uh, I don't have a controller plugged in right this second. So I just reboot it and see if it'll go through this time. Usually the DVD will bypass the onboard. And it should boot straight through. And I guess I have to have the clock set first. Uh, I get on uh, into robot mode working on these. And honestly, after I've worked on so many of them, uh, I, I do it without even thinking. So I half these steps I don't even recall until I get to them again. All right. Should load up now. Well, that boots quick. That was a fast transition from the logo to black screen. So DVD's working good on this. I'll do a cleaning on the laser. But I'm going to leave everything alone in there because the Thompsons are so finicky. Um, I've I've done some where they were just slightly not reading properly. You know, every once in a while they'd flake out. I adjusted the, pen, the potentiometer, and after that I could never get another one to read, even though I was within specs of what the laser was supposed to be using, what it was supposed to be putting out. So we got Halo. Halo's working fine. So everything seems to be gone on this. It looks like it's ready for a modding. So we will do that next.